Hi, I'm Janelle Swanson. I'm the chairperson of the Speech and Language Department for Prairie Lakes AEA. Actually, I'm just getting ready um, and doing some planning for our next department meeting. The speech language pathologists at Prairie Lakes AEA continually learn more and more and more because our services have changed a lot in the last few years. We still do those services that people are used to us providing, the articulation and voice and fluency, but our, the area of language has expanded a lot in the last few years because of its high impact on other uh, student achievement in all areas of academics. So we need to continually provide more and more support to our SLPs to be able to provide those services. We also provide lots of different service delivery options and that means that sometimes we work with skill building and work with individual children but we also work with whole classrooms. We consult with teachers. We help buildings look at their data and figure out what their needs are and we even look at the district's needs. And so we are busier all the time and need to hone in those skills. Um, but I really actually need to get back to planning. Um, I want you to hear from some other people to hear about what the Prairie Lakes SLPs do. Thank you. I think school-based speech pathologists have it great. My day is never the same, so I don't have to worry about getting into a rut. Uh, sometimes I'm working with children who are one or one and a half. Sometimes I'm working with high school students that have um, very um, severe communication delays and so they need something else to help them communicate. And I have preschool kids it kind of in the middle so my day is never the same. Sometimes I'm working with teachers and sometimes with parents. It's fun <laughs> but there's a lot of variety. Um, you'd think that it would be the same from place to place but there's so much variety in the way you can serve kids and, and you're not just doing one thing, you're not just pulling them out and working on one thing. It's different curriculums, different ways of serving the kids and each child has different needs and, and responds differently to how you're going to treat them. So it, it's fun to figure out what am I going to do with this kid to get him to learn this skill. I think that people still tend to view us as being speech therapists in the schools and have sort of a medical model that we come into the schools that we find kids who have speech problems and that we fix those problems. In reality we do so much more. We're very much literacy based now. We are working with teachers to use general education curriculum to help children with their communication skills and that includes language, listening, it includes comprehension vocabulary. So very much I think of myself as a communication interventionist rather than as a speech therapist. What I like most about my job is the variety. Every day um, is different and every moment throughout the day is different. I'm working with um, kids all day long in one form or another. They may be from preschool on up through high school. I also get to interact with adults. Um, I'm involved in um, supporting teachers in the classroom. I'm involved in the early literacy teams within the buildings that I'm working in. So my day is broken up with um, multiple tasks and a variety of activities. It is always thought of our SLPs taking kids out of the classroom and working with them, which she does a great job. But our SLP also goes into the classroom. It could be team teaching with a whole group. It could be working with a small group of students. It might be working one-on-one -on -one right in the same classroom with the rest of the students. So it's not always take the student out of the classroom. I think an area that a lot of people don't really appreciate about a speech language pathologist's role is how diverse we are. We are you know, when they, a lot of people think of speech pathologists, they think of artic problems, sound differences. Um, but when you look at a preschool level, you're looking at the phonological um, disabilities or unintelligible kids. You know, we're responsible for that. We're responsible for all language issues, for vocabulary or, or syntax or grammar. Um, fluency is another area that we're responsible for. Voice concerns. We're 
becoming more involved with the reading initiative, with the assessment and interventions. And um, I don't think sometimes people realize how diverse we really are and how many hats we wear. I always try to explain it as we work with anything that involves communication. So that could be, you know, talking to your buddy, gestures, anything that helps a child to succeed in school as with regards to communication. And I feel like a lot of times people don't see the broad range. They just see the, the things that are more observable, like the R's and the S's and things of that nature. So We are co-teaching with teachers in classrooms. We are training um, teachers, whether they're preschool teachers, um, K through 12, how to use research-based strategies to help kids um, use communication skills and to develop their language and literacy skills. We are um, actually going into classes and modeling best strategies. And I'll try to give some examples. Um, for example, we might go into a pre preschool classroom and do um, story lessons with kids and actually model how to do interactive story readings in a way that enhances vocabulary development, language development, and most of all, reading, early reading and early literacy. I also serve severe and profound classrooms. That work is mostly consultative. I go in and I talk with the teacher about children's communication system. I work with the children occasionally, maybe working with their specific communication system if we're starting a new one or if there's something that's um, not quite working right, but that's mostly consultative with the teachers. I have a daughter who is 11 now, but was diagnosed at birth with a hearing loss, a significant hearing loss. Um, and when she was born, there was a lot of ifs and, and, and the unknown and uh, just didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and immediately the hospital said, we'll contact your AEA and they will help you. And uh, you know, by the time we got home, she was in the hospital a month. And when we got home, we had a phone call, we had several visits. Uh, so it started from the very beginning of her life. I teach children from birth to three some of the teaching uh, goes on at home. Sometimes we have them come into the office. Some of the work is directly with the student, but most of the work is really uh, talking with the parents about how to teach the children language skills on a daily basis since we're only there for a pretty short amount of time. Um, and the speech services the uh, speech and language pathologist that worked with her, um, she's had several through the course of her 11 years, and each one has just added on to what the one before has done. Um, and I remember when she was three years old, we had just moved to a new house, and it had a fireplace, the first time we'd ever had a fireplace. And at Christmas time, in Christmas Eve, I was tucking her in, and, and I, as I kissed her goodnight, she, she looked at me, she says, I'm going to listen to see if Santa comes. That was the best present I'd ever had. She, that couldn't have been more normal for a little child to anticipate the arrival of Santa. And f for her to be able to uh, verbally express her joy at that season, it, it, that I haven't received any other be better presents than that for her to be able to say that. What I love most about my job is seeing success with the kids and uh, when you finally get a child to say a certain sound or to really do well then you kind of feel like you've done your job and, and that you're making progress and I feel like that's the most exciting part.